What's up, buds? It's your bud, Bolt, and today we're going to wash our hockey equipment. When it comes to washing your gear, the first thing that's really important is just to make sure you're airing it out after each use. Every game, every practice, every whatever training session, every time you decide you're going to make a video about how to put on hockey gear out in the summer sun and you're going to sweat in your gear, you're going to want to make sure to air it out. Now there's a few ways of doing this. The first way is just let loose. Just open your bag and let all of your gear explode all over your living room, um, outside on the deck, wherever. Just make sure that space isn't too damp and make sure that if you're leaving your bag open or your skates out or your gloves out that um, it, <laughs> there's not going to be fun, any fun surprises in the dressing room where you decide you're going to open your bag and a mouse or uh, a giant spider is going to crawl out of something or you put your hand in something and you get an unfortunate visitor. Um, I've seen it happen a lot in rooms. I think we've had a couple dressing rooms where people come in after the, after the summer's done, they open their bags and there's just suddenly a mouse in the dressing room. <laughs> Um, or they get a fun surprise in a skate that's uh, a spider or some other, like a centipede or silverfish, whatever you've got in your region. So just make sure you're being careful of where you're letting your stuff out to, to dry. Um, the other note is that if, you're, if you are letting it out in the sun, be careful with your gloves. I would not put my gloves out in the sun. The leather of the gloves go three ways. They're perfect. It's nice. It's supple. It is dry. They get slimy, which means they haven't been allowed to dry and the bacteria has clung to them and literally it feels like slime on your hands. Or they turn to about the crispiness of potato chips. <laughs> so <laughs> the potato chips happen when you dry your gloves using high heat. So what I recommend is when it comes to your gloves, don't leave them in the sun, don't dry them with your dryer at home, and don't dry them using a blow dryer, just nothing with really high heat. Um, and make sure they dry completely uh, so you don't end up with those slimy fingers. And you'll notice this if you ever play in a tournament and there's like really no way to get your gear dry between games, you're going to have the glove slime. It's, it's part of the initiation <laughs> into the game. So we're going to talk about how to get rid of that glove slime. Uh, but we're going to first move on to other ways to air out your gear because it's not the only way. A lot of people use a hockey tree. You can buy these at Canadian Tire. Um, you can make your own whatever. It's basically uh, like a hockey dummy. Like you put your equipment on this wood contraption, plastic contraption, and it, it just kind of like holds everything in place. I had one growing up. Um, and they, they work well. It's cool. Uh, it definitely looks cool in your basement and it's better organizing things than having a bag exploding all over your living room. Another option is just hangers at home, so like your shoulder pads um, and elbow pads can usually be either you can use the velcro straps to strap against and around the hangers or you can hang them up like a shirt. Um, you can loop the, the hanger over like any kind of strap that's in there, so like your pants. You can just hang those somewhere to dry if you have the room. And uh, it's best for like all three of those options, like if you're putting things on hangers, if you're letting them loose, if you've got a hockey tree, if you put a fan on them, like just general old school fan or a ceiling fan, they're going to dry quicker and you're going to get a better dry because of the air circulation. All right, so I guess I'll see you at the washing machine because that's where we're headed to next. <laughs> So a few notes about washing your gear. The first thing you're going to do is anything with a Velcro, you're going to make sure it's smoothed down. This is so that Velcro doesn't catch on any of your other equipment or on this equipment and pull and snag and tear out the fabric. Now one way to make sure that this doesn't happen in your bag even and to make sure that when you wash your gear that you smooth down any velcro as you take things off of your body and put them in your hockey bag. This is going to really prolong the life of any kind of gear that has fabric on it and you're not it's not going to get pulled, you like those weird velcro pulls and get kind of shaggy. 
like uh, so many things do when they get snagged with Velcro, especially in the washing machine. So now all of your gear gets put in the washing machine. Once again, make sure your Velcro's done up. So shin pads are going in. Pants right in. And that's one of the reasons why I keep those string sides so that this is easy. Shoulder pads right in the washing machine. And it's helpful because the smallest things go last. So that looks like it's pretty full. But elbow pads are small. They fit in nooks and crannies and gloves. So if you've got a top loader, you might want to split your gear up. Or, you know, if you've got a smaller machine, just do it into two or three loads. If it'll fit, your bag can also go in the washing machine. You might want to wash it on its own. They tend to be bulky. But literally everything but your helmets and your skates changes go right into your washing machine. Now we're going to talk about what you add in to get this stuff clean. You can use your regular detergent. That's completely fine. Or with my hockey stuff, with anything I sweat a lot in, even my work stuff, I like to use Tide Sport. It's not the only sport soap out there, but it's the most accessible and honestly the cheapest that I've found and it works really well. Uh, I have tried soap, sport soap, uh, sport suds, and uh, some other soap I don't remember the name of that is sport specific, but this honestly does the best job that I've found uh, and it's not too expensive. A lot of the options on the market are actually fairly expensive. Um, but so this Tide Sport, uh, this one I got 54 pods in and I think I paid $18.99 for it. So it's not too expensive and I'm really only using it to wash. I wash my washable so I wash my Under Armour and my Jill and my neck guard and my jersey in it every week. And then I wash my hockey equipment in it every usually two times per season and uh, that's when I'm playing about two three times a week if I'm playing three four times a week uh, so I do sometimes like to wash it uh, every like two months so pretty frequently just to make sure everything's clean and that there's no mold growing on my gear because that's the main thing and uh, if you do find mold growing on your gear something you can add to this wash is a it's like spray and wash type situation with oxygen bleach in it. You don't want to add regular bleach to your gear, but oxygen bleach is going to do a good job of getting rid of mold without fading or deteriorating your gear. Another thing that I like to add are basically Downy Unstoppables, but off brand. <laughs> I have used this the, the on brand stuff before and these work just as well and they're from the dollar store. So if you want to save money, there are options out there. Check out your Dollar Tree or Dollarama, and you might get lucky and find these. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. I believe I got these from the Dollar Tree. But I like to add these whenever I wash my gear. I don't really add them when I wash anything else but my bedding because it's nice when it's fresh. Uh, but especially when I'm putting my gear away for a long time. So if I'm, put, I'm doing a wash at the end of the season, to store my gear for the summer, I add these in so that when September rolls around, my stuff is still really nice and fresh. And as another testimonial to adding in some kind of scent booster was the how to get dressed video where, uh, yeah, I, I noticed how clean my gear smelled after being away for a few months. If you're still finding or having issues with this scent, you can add just some regular white vinegar to the wash, uh, add it right to the drum, and that's gonna help just kind of like disinfect and with some scents. It's gonna smell like vinegar when you add it, but once everything's clean and everything's rinsed, that vinegar smell is gonna go away quickly. You can also use fabric softener, totally cool. Some people really like to use fabric softener, especially with their gloves to get them nice and soft if they've already reached potato chip crisp. Uh, that really helps with that. And so go ahead and add your fabric softener the same you would for doing regular laundry. So, since my stuff still smells pretty fresh, I'm not actually going to wash it, but I will show you the process for how I would do it. So, I would add these in to the main drum, shake, 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 
and then I'd grab one of these guys and just toss that in. And because it's a big load, I might toss another one in. Then I'm going to close the door. Done! Now we're going to turn this on. And we're always going to wash in cold temperature. Remember how I mentioned earlier that we never want to apply high heat to our gloves? That includes in your washing machine, so you might be tempted to put it on the sanitize function. But if your gloves are in there, make sure you're washing in cold water, which means no sanitize function. Now we're going to want to make sure we've got a high spin. That way we're getting all that water out before we dry it, because this is not going in the dryer. Your soil level probably set to normal. And then you can always add an extra wash and an extra rinse. Now you just start your washer. As that's going, we're going to talk about a few more pieces of equipment that you'll probably want to sanitize in some way, shape, or form. First thing being your helmet. Now the outside, you can just wipe this down with like a damp rag, maybe a little bit of soap if you want. Um, this doesn't really get that dirty or sweaty. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now, the inside. So this padding here can get really, really grubby and stinky. And this, I don't know about you, but my head sweats. Oh, it sweats when I'm on the ice. And uh, so this gets really gross. But as you can see, it's not that gross. Now, it's that way because I make sure to take care of it. it. It gets aired out after every game, so I don't really need to worry about, you know, getting it clean because there's never any time for any bacteria to actually do any kind of funky things with my helmet because it always gets dried out in time. If you leave your helmet all sweaty and gross in your hockey bag, you can buy sport equipment sprays that you can usually use on everything, but they have specific helmet and skate sprays. Now I found a uh, Granger's helmet and sp skate spray for $8.99 at Sport Check. I actually think I'm going to go pick some up, so I'll let you know how that goes. Um, because it would be nice to be able to spray my skates, even though they don't really smell, but just have something in case. You never know. Now the other thing are your skates. I want to reiterate, get your blades dry after every single use of your skates. So you're going to want to use your skate towel, you're going to want to dry down the, the blades themselves. You're going to want to make sure that your chassis is completely dry as well. Um, and that means just get the ice off of them. Also, get yourself a pair of skate guards with some terry cloth, something absorbable in there. Because if these rust, that's going to be a heck of a time getting rid of the rust. You might have to replace your skate blades so that it can be grinded out. But if it is, you know, down pretty far on your blades, they've been stored for a while, you're going to need to replace your skate blades. The other thing you can do is when you air out your skates, most skates have a removable insole. So there should be one of these in each of your skates. Uh, if you don't like them, you can buy uh, like orthotics. You can also get orthotics made for your skates. But take these out when you air out your gear and let these dry and it'll help the inside of your skates dry. If you find your skates are getting really smelly, uh, a trick that I use also for my work boots that I've been putting in my skates for a while are tea bags. Just some like orange pico black tea bags. I usually toss two in a boot and just leave them there when I'm airing them out and that'll absorb a lot of the smell. Don't know how it works, but it does. Now when this stuff is done washing, uh, you can dry it the same way you would air out your gear. Make sure you put a fan on it so you can put it, you know, just let loose in your living room. You might want to put down a couple towels uh, to grab some of that dampness. You can hang it on your hockey tree. Uh, you can put it outside. Make sure you don't put the gloves outside. And uh, just put a fan on it and let it just dry for like overnight should do it. Um, but the good news is this time when you let it dry out, it's not going to smell because it'll all be clean. And that's it. That's... That's how you wash your gear. So hopefully now, if you've bought used gear, it's all been cleaned, it's smelling good, and uh, you're excited to put it on and use it, because I'm sure you weren't before. Thanks for watching, and please remember to take your skate guards off. Now, if you like this video, just go ahead on and subscribe, 
click the notification bell to get updates. I will be doing a live Q&A soon where you'll be able to ask me questions live about anything I've covered and things that I haven't covered because I'm not going to get to everything before the season starts. You know, there's, there's so much information and I really want to ease a bunch of your nerves and make sure that you're well prepared for what you're walking into. So I will make an announcement about when that's supposed to happen, probably on my next video. But for now, just know that the next video we're going to be talking about skate sharpening. We're going to talk about how to know what size of skate sharpening you should get. Yes, there are sizes. <laughs> what kind of skate sharpening? Yes, there are kinds. And profiling and what your edges are. And we're just going to talk all about your skate blades, basically. So once again, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, click the notification bell so you stay up to date with all of it. See you later, buds. Oh, that one made it in there too.